and welcome to Sectors Up Close, I'm Elena Casas. Our focus today is on investing in bonds and our guest is Justin Urquhart-Stewart, the founder of Regionally. With central bank printing presses currently firing on all pistons and interest rates near or in some cases below zero, it's no surprise bonds have underperformed since the start of the pandemic. Some of the world's largest bond funds have been treading water or worse. This one is one of the largest tracking the global bond market, despite having a yield of 1.8%, which is certainly more than most bank accounts. It's down more than 3% so far this year amid a sustained rally in stocks. So, should investors be considering bonds as part of their portfolio? And if so, how should they navigate which type of debt might have a better outlook this year? Let's ask Regionally's Justin Urquhart Stewart. Hello, Justin. Thanks for joining us. Hello. Given that Pleasure. current low interest rate, then, should investors be considering bonds at all? Well, certainly, government bonds are very unattractive. As you were just saying, they're printing these bonds, they're printing money to try and get ourselves out of the economic difficulties with the pandemic. So I'm afraid at the moment bonds are in a position where they're giving you an absolutely dreadful return and you're, sometimes you're even having to pay for the pleasure of holding it. No, the market is being squeezed at the moment. So for most private investors, standard government bonds are not the place to be in. If those are out then, what types of bonds should investors consider? Well, there are all sorts of variations. So, for example, you do have still government bonds, but they're inflation proof bonds. Now, there's a thought this year that actually we're going to start seeing inflation back into the economy. And frankly, we haven't seen that uh, around the world really for about 20, 30 years, apart from a few countries that have suffered from hyperinflation quite regularly, like some of the South American countries. But actually, for most Western countries, it's been incredibly low. But now we're beginning to see commodities rising, possibly a demand for further wage rises. So there's a thought that inflation could be picking up this year, in which case, therefore, inflation bonds could be the place to be. And so having some exposure to that could be positive. The other area is corporate bonds, companies themselves issuing debt. But you have to be careful here. Sometimes they can offer very attractive yields. But be careful, that yield, that return you're getting, merely reflects actually possibly the danger or concern you have over the company themselves. So you have to pick your way very carefully there. If it's too good to be true, be wary, because it's probably not true. Where would be a good starting point then for investors wanting to put money into the debt market? Well, what you can do with this is actually look at some of the particular funds which cover a range of different bonds uh, that you can actually try and have. Because the thing about bonds is unlike equities, uh, which will go up and down and will actually then hopefully pay you a dividend in due course, this is a debt. You've lent that to the government or to the company and the company will pay you um, a coupon, a yield on it every single year, and then in due course you get your money back. Um, so what it means is you can give a hopefully a greater level of forward planning to your debt as to actually the sort of returns you want. So there are different ways of doing it. There are bond funds themselves. Some will specialize in corporate ones. Some will be international as well as domestic. And so they will have a pretty good track record so you can see how they have performed. I would keep away from government bonds for the time being, but certainly the inflation bonds, you can buy those on quite small groups as well and make sure you give yourself some inflation insurance just in case that takes off. So for private investors, don't ignore bonds. Be wary, of, be wary of them in terms of the risk that's there. In terms of government bonds, I don't think you want to be going there now. Thanks so much. That was Justin Urquhart Stewart, founder of Regionally. Before we go, then, here are some of the top stories in the sector. Minutes from the European Central Bank meeting last month show policymakers agreed to ramp up bond purchases on condition they could be cut again later if conditions allow. The ECB has set aside 1.85 trillion euros in its pandemic emergency purchase programme, but has repeated it may not be necessary to spend the entire amount. On Wednesday, Dutch central bank chief Klaas Knott said the pace of the eurozone recovery could allow the ECB to start phasing out its emergency bond purchases in the third quarter. Those ECB minutes came after minutes of the US Federal Reserve showed officials remain wary about the ongoing risks of the pandemic. And while several policymakers thought interest rates might need to increase sooner than anticipated by the majority of their colleagues, there was little sense of urgency around the issue, as labour markets are improving but remain scarred. 
And finally, the head of the International Monetary Fund said she would discuss with member countries whether they back offering low and zero interest financing to middle-income countries hit hard by the pandemic by widening the definition of what classifies a country as vulnerable. Managing Director Kristalina Georgieva said she was concerned about tourism-dependent and other middle-income countries with weaker fundamentals and high debt levels even before the pandemic. And that's your roundup of the bond sector. I'm Elena Casas and this is Reuters.